that that ability to watch a sport together and and help them into the process of learning it and loving it but also i think because we haven't had it for so long i think people will just be like give it all to me yeah. and and i'm also thinking one of the ways that sports has been good just even in the last few years since people have started watching things like netflix and people don't really watch live television mm -hmm. the same way that they have uh, in the past. And that's affected ad dollars, that's affected all sorts of things. Well, sports are the thing that you have to watch live. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think, I think that when it does come back, it'll be this massive bonding experience that we can all have, not just with our own um, families, but with everybody, you know, like we're seeing that with, we saw that with the draft, mm -hmm. the numbers for the draft were insane. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because people are so thirsty for any kind of live sporting coverage yeah. and, and also the community that comes along with that. I think, you know, people want to hop on Twitter and have everybody talking about the thing and like we're all in this together. I think we're seeing that with the last dance documentary and I'm sure that those numbers are way bigger than they would have been otherwise because people are just so thirsty for that experience of going through something together. Yeah, being on Twitter um, during the NFL draft, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have friends again. Like, <laughs> it's totally. so nice to see everyone like talking about the same thing. Yes, absolutely. I mean, other aside from Tiger King, what have we yeah. what have we had in quarantine exactly. at that bill? <laughs> no, Tiger King is great. Okay, I have a few rapid fire questions for you. Okay. Okay. So, favorite NFL player ever? Oh God, I'm not. Uh, like like uh talent wise maybe not personality because that's hard for you to pick like you know based off of everything um i was a big peyton manning fan like i just i just loved watching him play quarterback i loved how in control he was i loved the cerebral nature of his game and then obviously the talent that went along with that um i was a big peyton manning again i wouldn't rank him ahead of tom because i know that that's the next question like is peyton better you know i'm not saying that i'm just saying that i as a fan really enjoyed watching mm -hmm. him play i love that favorite sports book um okay so this is super random because it's from a million years ago but i read it in college for a sports sociology class mm -hmm. that i took that i loved and um and it was at a point in my life when like i, I it helped me think about like, how do I want to approach this career in sports? And, you know, anyway, the book is called you're okay. It's just a bruise. And it was about a, the Raiders doctor during like the Lyle Alzado years and um, how it kind of used to be like the wild west in terms of doctors getting people back on the field and not necessarily taking injuries seriously and um, being in bed with the teams and having their best interests at mind. And, um, and what all happened in that regard. It's very not like that anymore, but it was a really interesting look at, uh, like what we're willing to sacrifice in order to get the gladiatorial, uh, part of the sport, um, on the field. But anyway, I thought it was, uh, uh, really, really interesting. That's awesome. I should read that. Okay. Favorite sports movie or documentary. Um, favorite. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know that it's my favorite, but the the last dance right now is so good. And I'm just loving going through that uh, trip down memory lane has been so fun. So I feel like that's when I was getting into the sports business. Like um, I, that was like my high school, college years, you know, that, that I'm kind of watching there. And, and so I don't remember the things that, uh, it, that, um, that they're documenting quite as much as I have the thing since I became a professional. And so it's been really interesting for me to watch that and go like, oh my gosh, yes, uh, you know, that person was there. I forgot that that person was even on that team or had that experience or like Paul Westfall is the coach of the Suns. Like he, I, I know him, like I hadn't even put two and two together that he coached against MJ in the fight, you know, like there was just all of, all of this stuff. I'm really enjoying that experience right now. Yeah, because, I mean, people are always like, oh, MJ, LeBron, who is it? I'm like, honestly, I wasn't really around. Like, I don't remember how good MJ, I mean, I literally yes. was born in 96. So, um, yeah, and then the, <laughs> the, the amount of footage that they have, though, is so cool. It is. It's, it's, it is. It's really cool. All of the behind-the-scenes stuff, and I really loved in episode six how, like, 
I mean, the people just from a documentary making standpoint, the fact that the theme of the doc of episode six was in large part like him dealing with fame and he's sitting in his hotel room talking about how he can't go anywhere because he gets too much attention and all that stuff and him kind of coming to grips with how his life has changed in that regard. But then the episode ends with him driving a red and black Range Rover with a two tray vanity license plate and just the contrast that they subtly displayed, like he's struggling with the attention that he's getting, mm -hmm. but then that's not exactly an incognito way to roll down the freeway. So I just, I, I, I love the way that they put it together. It's masterfully done. And like, I, I've heard some people kind of um, bothered by, this is sorry, it's, we're off track, but kind of bothered by why it's not in order. Um, basically mm, like yeah. you know, they highlight they highlight um, Rodman and like if they go to Phil and then you know it's kind of it's a little bit all over the place but I think that's what makes you think and what makes it kind of connect the dots you know yeah to, to I think if they told it very linearly just because the the point is that it's supposed to center around the, the last season right it's called the last dance so the crux of the story is about the last season so you can't tell it completely linearly. like you can't be like in the first episode, like start in at the end mm -hmm. and then go like rewind and then tell the whole story from start to finish. But that said, I kind of am in the camp of like the jumping. It's almost, it just, to me, it jumps around a little bit too much. Um, so I'm like, where are we now? When is this happening? Why did we just jump back there and, mm -hmm. you know, and jump forward and then back again? But I get why they did it. Sure. I love the, I just love how they set up MJ just in his house. I, I just like, he's just like relaxed. He's just talking about it. Like, like Isaiah Thomas was the worst. Like he's like, I don't yeah. really care. You know, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. With the um, glass of whiskey. Yeah. That's the best part. Okay. What you're going to do post quarantine. First thing you're going to do post quarantine. Oh my gosh. Go, go places. <laughs> like I'm a homebody. Um, so in that sense, this hasn't been that dramatically difficult for me, but there's just a few people and places that I do like going to, you know? Uh, I'm eager to get back in the studio and see my friends from work that, uh, you know, I'm used to seeing on a daily basis that I haven't seen since this all went down. And um, to my mom's house, my brother's, get all those family visits in, mm -hmm. get my kids to play with their cousins. Yes, I love that. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, socializing that isn't being lost right now for kids that's kind of a bummer to see no that's that's definitely the worst part and like summer it's going to be hard too if they're not able to see their friends but yeah. um next super bowl champion um oh gosh that's hard because i feel like when i forget somebody right now um let's go ravens I like the Ravens. I, I was shocked that the Ravens uh, left the playoffs as early as they did this year. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I just think it's a fluke. I think it's a fluke that Lamar had the game that he did. I don't think it's like a, you know, people tried to make it like a, oh, he can't, he can't win in the playoffs or, you know, he's good in the regular season, but then like, like it's like pressure gets to him or something like that. And I just don't, I don't believe that that will end up being true. I think that, they have such a good roster that they put together and mm -hmm. such a good organization. And Harbaugh is such a great coach. Yeah. They built around the talent that they have in Lamar Jackson. And I, uh, I definitely believe in what they have going on there. I like that. Good take. Um, most exciting team coming up. I guess that kind of, is it the Ravens? It, well, the most exciting team is clearly the Bucks, just because. Oh, duh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we're all dying to see what it, what Brady looks like without Belichick, what Brady looks like with Arians. I mean, Arians and Belichick could not be more different in terms of just their approach as coaches, their style, their personalities, um, watching Brady in that environment. Uh, we've already seen some glimpses of Brady's personality and how it might be different. Him going on Howard Stern is something that Brady the Patriot way would never have done. And so is that a sign that he's going to do more things like that? And that that was sort of the Patriots, um, that he was following their rules and sort of that that wasn't necessarily his personality. Um, will Gronk still be good or not? You know, Gronk wasn't Gronk before he retired and then he lost a ton of weight in retirement. Does he put it all back on? Has he hasn't played for a year? Is he still any 
good. Um, but Brady with Evans and Godwin, I mean, I'm, I'm just really curious to see how it all plays out and without an off season. Yeah. You know, Brady in a new offense without an off season, I don't know. And I'm really curious about it. Very interesting. And it was so funny when they just started posting videos and everyone's like, what? Like he just shook up quarantine. He's like, I'm going to the Bucks. Oh yeah. And Gronk's coming. Oh yeah. And that. (laughs) Okay. uh, What are you most proud of? Mm, Personally. uh, I mean, personally, personally, my kids. Yes. My kids, my kids are pretty amazing. And so that's where it all starts. Um, Professionally, I think I'm most proud of the fact that I, uh, just stuck with it, you know, and, and got kind of where I wanted to go in a vague way. And, um, that, uh, that there are so many like hurdles in the road, you know, and so many opportunities to, to where you could look at yourself and go like, there's an easier path. You know, I could, I could, I could get into producing, I could go back to school and become a lawyer or whatever, you know, like there are different things that when those, those, um, trials pop up, that you think maybe I should go in a different way. Um, And so I think I'm most proud that I kind of stuck with it and believed in myself and that ultimately paid off, like that I should have believed in myself because I could do it. Love that. And a few fan questions. Uh, What's what's the most challenging part of your job? Most challenging part of my job? Hmm, well, I, I, I don't know if it's the most challenging. The thing that I love the most about it is that it just changes every day. You know, uh, I work within the same structure. Like I do a show. So it's the same show every single day, but that same show is different completely every single day. And so it's like putting together a little bit of a puzzle because the information that you have, the content that you have that day that's provided via the news or via whoever your interview guest subject is or whatever the producers have decided they want to talk about the AFC West that day or something like that. It's always different every day. And so trying to figure out how do I want to put this together and how do I want to make this feel like it's a smooth experience for the viewer and, um, it just kind of, it's a, it's a real subtle art of trying to weave all of these different storylines together in a way so that then when it's presented to the viewer, there's something memorable, hopefully that happens. That's fun. Um, there's information that's in part, like it's, it's all this balance. And I really like the act of putting together that balance. The biggest challenge is probably just getting to a point where you do believe in yourself. I said, I believed in myself in terms of like, yes, I should, continue on and doing this, but you know, there's, there's, um, it, it's, it's a process to get to a point where you, you, you think like, okay, my voice has value. You know, I didn't, I didn't play football. So, uh, as an example, you know, you could walk into a, a meeting and think, well, I'm not going to say what I think because there's somebody sitting next to me here who has a couple of Super Bowl rings. So what, do, you know, why is my opinion valid? And I think just doing it, and again, this goes back to reps, doing it over and over and over again and talking to so many people, you realize, oh, like, you know, a lot of the things that I'm hearing other people say are the things that I think. Or when I do say what I think, and this is where I've come now, when I do say what I think, there's people in the room that go, oh, that's a good point. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so getting to the point where you just trust that, that in your own experience and you trust in whatever thoughts that you have and you don't just constantly like hold back because you're afraid of the judgment that might come. Um, I think that that's been a big thing for me in my career arc is getting to a point where I trust myself. And I know that if I have a question, that is probably a good question because I've put myself in a position to have you know, I do my studying, I do the homework, I know all of the information that's going on. So I trust that the question that I have now isn't stupid. And then it just sort of frees me to be myself. And then uh, also a lot of times if it's a question that you have, then it's a question that somebody at home might have too. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that's been, just from a career standpoint, that's been a challenging thing is getting to the point where you really, really trust yourself so that you can be your best you. I love that. And uh, speaking of the, your studying, how do you study the best? All the players. Um, yeah, I'm an over preparer, and anybody who has worked with me will chuckle as I said that because I'm such an over preparer. Um, 
I, I am not somebody who can just take like the basic, like even if I'm writing a 15 second voiceover that's going to go in our show, um, I'm somebody who will read like three articles about it, you know, just cause I want to make sure that I fully understand, um, all of the, and, and I'm the person who like will read the article that has a link to the original article that they're citing. And so I'll like follow all the links and like read all of them. I like to really feel like I have a good feel for what has been reported before mm -hmm. I explain that in a, con, um, a consolidated way. Uh, and also I like to read all of that so that then I realize this is what's out there. And so I know what's not out there yet. So then I go, okay, as I'm taking all of that in, what are the questions that pop into my mind? What do I, what questions are unanswered yet? So how, how can I um, go about getting those answered? And so I have found that the more that I take in that's already reported, then I have a better understanding for, and then that puts me, it goes back to the trust thing. Like I know that this question hasn't been asked. So this is a good question to ask, you know? Um, I, I like to have a lot of information at my disposal and then um, so that that helps me frame what fresh content I can provide. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty constant. I do like though that right now, cause I used to, when I worked at Fox Sports West for about six years, I would do uh, an angels game one day and then a Kings hockey game the next day. And then a USC football practice the next day. And then like, it was always something different. And so you're constantly studying. That was like, I've got a test tomorrow. I'm cramming to read everything so that I don't look like a moron and ask a stupid question the next day at practice because I haven't been there for a week and a half. Mm -hmm. So the, the beauty of my job now that I love for me is that it's 32 teams and it's just the NFL. So all that I don't know is what happened today because everything that's happened for the last 10 years I've been there for, you know, so I don't have to catch up. It's just, all right, what happens today at Panthers practice that I don't know what happened with the Buccaneers that's fresh, you know? So, um, so there's less studying that has to, um, that has to happen in order to get up to speed. And, uh, how did you make, okay. So with basically what they're trying to ask is it's so competitive right in this industry so how did you make how did you stand out to make that jump to in to the role you're in right now at info network that's a good question because i don't think that i i don't think that i have ever been i don't think i'm the most talented person like none of the whole broadcasting thing comes naturally to me i'm an overthinker which is not necessarily a good thing when you're a broadcaster and you just kind of have to go. And, and then, like I said, the trust, you know, so if you're an overthinker, then the trust isn't necessarily there. There were times earlier in my career where I, I wished that I, I didn't think as much about things because I was, I would judge things the second they came out of my mouth. I was like, Oh, that wasn't, you know, and so I was more tentative and um, some of that stuff hurts your performance. But I think, um, I think that the fact that I was such a hard worker and I was so prepared for every job I ever had, again, to a point where sometimes it was, um, like I would be over-prepared and that wouldn't actually be the best thing for my performance. But I think that people respected that I was coming to the table and taking the job very seriously. And I was treating it with a lot of respect and I worked really hard. And I think that that was evident, um, mm -hmm. at every step. So I think that sometimes that was enough to overcome whatever presentation deficiencies there might have been um, in, in producers' eyes or people like that because they would have, they wanted me around, they trusted that I was going to work on those things because I had shown, um, uh, I was, I had shown that I was so serious about it, you know? So I think that that's probably the biggest thing that has been in my favor throughout my entire career is just the respect that I show the work and the fact that I put in the work. And then over time mm -hmm. that has just, it's like the Malcolm Gladwell, you know, I think it's 10,000 hours until you become an expert. Like you just, if you just keep getting the opportunity to do it, like you'll eventually get better at the presentation and mm -hmm. settle into something. And I think it took a long time for me to be like, you know, what is my presentation? You know, like in the beginning when you're starting broadcasting, I think it's inevitable that people look like they're playing broadcaster. 
because you're 22 years old or you're just out of college or you don't have a lot of life experience. You haven't gone through all of these reps, but you're standing in front of a camera and you're doing it. So you sort of end up mimicking what you think a broadcaster looks like or what you think a broadcaster sounds like. And, um, and that's not a bad thing, but it's not the best presentation because people can sense the inauthenticity and it doesn't sound conversational. It sounds like, you know, I wrote a sentence and I memorized the sentence and now I'm saying that memorized sentence. And, um, so over time you kind of settle into like, okay, so if I'm not mimicking a broadcaster, what am I like as a broadcaster? What is my voice? How do I sound conversationally? Um, and I think working through, I don't even remember what the question is. I'm rambling so That's much here. So good though. <laughs> I'm like, yes, <laughs> it's amazing. But, um, but yeah. That was so good. That was a great answer. Um, well, thank you so much. I think that's all I have. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I really like your setup. <laughs>